Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today we're talking about bottle fillers and counter pressure bottle fillers. The differences, all the different ones out there, and my favorite and why. So don't forget, like, subscribe. Don't forget, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate it. Over 50% of the viewers are subscribers, which is huge. Definitely appreciate it. So I'm going to jump right into this. And before we really get into crazy expensive stuff or cheap stuff or whatever you want to call it, you know, everybody's opinion of price is a little different. If you have an inner tap, and this is primarily for people who are kegging and looking to fill off the keg because they want to fill some bottles and share them out with some friends. If you have an inner tap, you have a couple of nice options. One, which they, uh, I think they call it a growler filler, but it can also be a bottle filler. It simply screws right onto the end and that's it. And you put your bottle up, you fill it, cap on foam, rock on. It's nice. I'm not going to say it's, you know, the best way of doing things. I do like this though. I'll show you this. And I'll make sure this piece is in here on the close up camera so you can see. Just goes right on the end. This is kind of cool. This goes on the end of your tap. And now you just have your disconnect and you put that right on there. Boom. And you can use that to go whatever type of device you're using. So there's a couple things you can do if you have an inner tap or the Nuka, Nuka taps or whatever they're called. They're using the same inner tap design. It's from my understanding, some of the same engineers that designed the inner tap system. And mine just happens to have flow control, which is kind of nice, especially when you're filling bottles. So right away, this is a bottle filler. And what's the difference between a bottle filler and a counter pressure? Well, the counter pressure, and this is probably one of the leading ones out there for a long time, allows you to put the bottle, let's grab a bottle here real quick, allows you to put the bottle and seal it. The bottle is now sealed. I let CO2 in. When the CO2 is in, I have a pressure gauge. I'm not gonna say I require or recommend you have to have a pressure gauge, but you have that in there. And once you do, you then flip it over here to liquid. The liquid continues to go in from the bottom and pushes that remaining CO2 that you've already flushed the bottle and flushed all the O2 out. It comes out here and as it gets to the top, you stop and you always want to wait until you get almost to the very top because this nice little hose is displacing the liquid. So, and of course you'll want to turn your flow off, but hey, it's just the difference. One allows you to fill purely on CO2, while the other one allows you to fill the bottle, hopefully purging out any CO2 with the liquid, or O2, sorry, with the liquid and filling on foam. Hopefully that foam is primarily CO2. That keeps you from leaving oxygen in the bottle. There is a problem. And I'll show you one of my first bottle fillers I ever bought. It was super cool. I think it should be in some sort of sci-fi movie called The Last Straw. Was excited when I got it. Thought it was one of the coolest things. Came in a really nice box. Got a little magnet in here. You take this thing out. It looks like literally, it looks like some sort of a laser gun that should be in some sort of a sci-fi movie. Super cool. Yeah, that's right, it's, you hold it like this. So you're filling your bottles like this. And it came with hoses, which was really nice. You have your air, your liquid, and then you screw on the other ends. This is part of my problem with some of these systems. They're a little unwieldy or unwielding. You put one on here, you put one on here. Your liquid, so I can get this right here, goes on this end and the CO2 goes on this end, and you literally just press that button, and that button will purge the CO2 by pushing CO2 in here and purging the oxygen and other air out of here. The problem with this, where do I start? <laughs> uh, well, we'll go, we'll go for the obvious. There's nothing to create counter pressure, which means that you're gonna lose a lot of that foam. And if you're doing something, a good example, I did a stout, which was a little low on the carbonation anyways, it was borderline flat. I mean, it was just so little carbonation left once it had filled on foam. It just, it made me hate this. And I was like, what did I buy? This thing is awful, I hate it. And yeah, just, you know, in your control, it's just, 
it's a cool system if you want to run around and look like you're shooting people with lasers. That's about it. And it came with a lot of nice stuff. And, you know, if you really aren't picky and you could care less if the beer in the bottle is carbonated, then go for it. Um, you'll be one of the coolest looking bottle fillers ever. There was a gentleman putting out a silicone piece that went on here. He got a lot of flack for it, but I get what he was trying to do. He was trying to make a really cool system, a great system. And, you know, sometimes you uh, get punished for doing a good thing. And he was trying to be useful and trying to do a good thing. So I'm gonna set these out of here. I'm trying to make this a nice short video and just go over the basics. The reason I have these out is this system uses the same type of technology, except that it is a counter pressure. It is not just a bottle filler. So you still have to screw these on. You got your liquid on one end, your CO2 on the other end. You have to open your keyser and you have your hoses hanging in and out. And based on your uh, bottle capper, This is my only negative with this system. And it's this, it definitely blows the last straw away. These are super inexpensive. I've seen them as low as $40. Normally they're around 60, I believe, with the nice little gauge. Sometimes as much as $100 with the gauge, especially if they stick a name brand on here. It's a very simple system. This allows you to increase or decrease pressure. I do not recommend that you have to get this. If you want it just because you like it, great. I got it because I wasn't sure if I needed a little pressure gauge. But the reason I'm saying you don't really need it is you can listen. You put this into your beer bottle. You turn your CO2 on. It's like, you reduce it a little bit. You stop the CO2. You come over here, you start the liquid. And the liquid starts coming up and you can control how much pressure is on there because you don't want to fill too quickly or you will get a little bit of foaming. So you keep it, keep it low. It'll come up to the top. You turn your liquid back off right in the middle. You don't want to turn the CO2 on or the liquid on. You want to turn them both off. You pull it out. And this is my problem. I've got all these hoses hanging on this thing. I'm dealing with a glass full of beer and I'm one person. Now, I will tell you, if you have someone that's always helping you with your brewing your beer and bottling your beer, if you want to bottle it off keg, this is probably my number one recommended system for two people. Because someone can help manage that, someone can take the bottles out of your way, cap them for you. If you're using something like this, it's a little more painful. But if you have a nice capper like this, I love this thing. You know, I even have a marking on the side that tells me for my regular size bottles. I put it up here, I put the cap on, boom, I cap it. It's all good, I get it out of the way. One person's managing capping, one person is managing filling the bottles. And hopefully the hoses aren't too unwieldy and you can keep them close to the keg because you're tethered. You have two hoses tethering you to the system and you're always gonna have some sort of a tethering system. But hands down, this is my favorite counter pressure bottle filler. The problem is I don't use it because I am one person and my oldest who can drink doesn't like helping me and would rather bribe my youngest who can't drink and doesn't want to do it anyways. So it's just better if I turn around and found a, a different solution for myself. But hands down, this is the best value in my eyes. It still needs to be taken apart and cleaned regularly. You still need something like these guys, which I've recommended before on one of the top 10 recommendations, tips, hacks, videos so that you can clean things really well and make sure they're nice and clean. I always have star sand nearby, but great counter pressure bottle filler. That way you keep your CO2 and you keep the foam in your beer. So when you give that bottle out to your friends, they're like, oh man, that was awesome. Yeah, you know, pour it great. And they love it. And one of the big reasons I like to still bottle is because I'm only bottling what I want to share. And on top of that, I don't have to tell them, oh, hey, don't pour that last sip. There's a big old yeast cake on the bottom. Well, it's because I'm carbonated from the keg and there is no yeast cake on the bottom. So it's one of the reasons I like it a lot. The last system here has been getting a lot of, should we say, publicity. And I saw it last year, the beginning of the year, I grabbed one. I am not gonna say it is perfect by far. And even I had problems and I reached out to their support and never heard a word, just crickets that does kind of kill me when I have a problem and the manufacturer doesn't even respond. Very upsetting and frustrating. 
It's called a tap cooler. And I know a lot of you have seen this thing as expanding rod and you have this little piece that goes in here and you have to put your hose on and clamp it down. Yeah, if you're buying one of these, my first thing off the bat is upgrade and get this piece. It's for the quick disconnect. It will allow you to literally snap, whoops, not your liquid, liquid, but your air. You'll be able to snap your air right on there, have it plugged in, and you'll be able to use it. it it's just, you have to have this. This is a necessity to me. The other part is you need a recent tap. I've heard there's some really old Parallax and some other ones that have some problems, but this literally just slides in and it's a little tough. So a little trick, put the food grade grease stuff on there. I just put a little star sand and it slides right in and that's it. So I have this on my keyser and I still have to have my CO2 coming out, which I have right here. And that CO2 plugs into, which I'll just put it on here. There we go. I put it on there and it's got a CO2 purging button up here. So I'm kind of like this and I'm filling my bottles and I take my bottle, I slide it up like this and it seals. You press that. Sometimes you can hear it come out here. Usually I just move the bottle a little, let a little bit release and then push it back. And then you throw my tap forward. I start filling the bottle. It's the same way as the other counter pressure filler, which is right here is that you're gonna let the liquid fill all the way to the very top. And as soon as it does, kick the tap off. If you have a lot of foam in here, you can kind of restrict it and it'll reduce some of that foam. But if you get a little bit, it's gonna drip out this side and you pull it out of the way. This you're gonna have up on a counter. You'll have paper towels, not a problem. This, if you're like me with a keyser, it's gonna go past your pan and it's going to drip on the floor. So I usually put a paper plate down there and a bunch of paper towels and let it drip because it doesn't matter what you do. You can sit and try to get all that liquid out, tap on it. As soon as you move that bottle, it's going to drip. It just does. It's one of the things that kind of frustrates me. But if you're a one man show, one girl show, whatever brewer, and you don't have someone to help you fill some bottles you want to share, I will say the tap cooler is the way to go for that because you can use it as one person and you don't have anything sticking out as long as it fits onto your taps, except a CO2 hose. And you can control the CO2 hose from the back if you have to, because this thing does not always seal very well. But the tap cooler for one person, if it's two people, you have this nice little counter pressure. They came out something recent, and I'll put links down below to where you can buy this type of stuff if you're interested, or if you just want to read the reviews and see what's going on. A lot of people will click on the links I put out there that are, a lot of them are affiliate links, throw me a little pocket change, but just go out and check it out and you can see the reviews and look at what's going on. This thing, I'm going to say the jury is still out. It hooks on like this and allows you to lock the bottle in place. So you don't have to keep pushing up because I am always pushing up. I usually have my knee up against it, holding it straight up until it's done. My only issue with this is it doesn't release real easy. So that's why I say the jury is still kind of out. It is not a bad thing. It's just something, maybe it's a little, uh, me getting used to it and acquainted with it. And occasionally I get tired and I have stuck this on a few times and I pulled it off a few times to see how I do or don't like it. Be careful when you're loosening it. It's got a tiny washer on the back. I've had to go chase that down already. So that's it. it. This video is just literally for people who haven't either bought a counter pressure or a bottle filler and they're wondering what the big differences are. I will say if you're going to use something like this where you screw it in, grab some of these. That way you can just take your tap right from there and quick disconnects. You can have a hose like I used to have a hose, one with a quick disconnect on both ends. And then you can have this sitting on here and then just plug it in. It does make life a little easier. If you have the duo tights, you can use those too with your system. It doesn't matter. There's different ways and different flexibility. But again, one man show, the tap cooler is definitely a, a great tool, far from perfect. And the counter pressure, just about perfect, except it's a two man show or two woman show, whatever you want to call it. It's just a lot of hoses going in and out and a little more unwielding, should we say? So that's it. 
Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate it.